Uh, xenobiotics from its name are those foreign uh, materials that do not belong to our living organism and they can get accumulated in our system and cause uh, immune system deficiencies or cancer. Examples of xenobiotics that are not natural and then we might be able to consume it through food chain are antibiotics such as penicillin, uh, food additives, pollutants such as PCB, polychlorinated benzenes, dioxins, insecticides, for example DDT, which was used in to extent amount in 1960s, heavy metals such as mercury ion and silver ion, and hormones, uh, hormones not wanted hormones such as estrogens, uh, especially for men, plastics such as polyvinyl chlorine or PVC, uh, when they get accumulated in our system and long-term exposure to them causes cancer or uh, deficiency in the immune system. Uh, now, the next item that you need to know is biomagnification, and it's simply an increase in concentration of xenobiotics in the food chain. For example, if you uh, look at planktons, uh, which are producers, uh, they will uh, ingest and take in about 0 0.003 parts per billion of DDT, but gradually as the uh, fish starts consuming it and bigger fish, uh, it's the smaller one, and the top predator here, the bird, the accumulation of DDT becomes 25 parts per million. So there is a drastic increase in the amount of this uh, xenobiotic, and this is known as... Uh, biomagnification. Uh, DDT was used extremely as insecticized in 1960 before 1970 it was banned. Also it's fat soluble that's another problem with DDT so it doesn't break down and it gets accumulated in our fatty tissues. So biomagnification is increase of xenobiotics in food chain. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, biodegradable plastic which will, which can be produced from corn uh, the issue is corn is also a food would you like to use it for plastic if you do so the plastic we can recycle it easily but then again you use food to make that instead of polyethylene plastic for example if you look at this uh, fork that is made from biodegradable plastic which is from corn after 45 days it uh, gets disintegrated it will be composted and the byproducts are carbon dioxide, water and methane. Methane is also a wonderful byproduct because we can use it as a fuel, we can burn it. So the good about biodegradable plastic is that we can easily recycle it and let the nature take care of that toll. The bad is that you use a corn to make, for example, plastic. Finally, the last thing we need to uh, sort of appreciate is host gas chemistry, which came from the concept of enzyme and lock and key, if you recall from uh, past videos. Now, what we do is uh, you, you make a host molecule that is cage-like, it's humongous, and then the gas molecule that usually is a xenobiotic or unwanted is going to be trapped in it, and then we remove it from the system. Uh, so the host gas complex, one thing you should realize for sake of answering questions, these are uh, interactions that are not covalent interactions. They could be H bonding, it could be, for example, London dispersion bonding, but they're not covalently bonded to, to each other. So London dispersion, for example, is another case of the bonding, but they're non-covalently bonded. Uh, nowadays, we use uh, host gas chemistry to remove cesium-137, which is radioactive from the system. So host gas chemistry is to have a complex in order to remove the xenobiotic from our environment.